The Prime Minister Tony Abbott is now front and centre of the latest furor over politicians' travel expenses as fresh revelations catch out both sides of politics. Mr Abbott has admitted using taxpayer-funded entitlements to claim expenses for the polypedal charity cycling ride and for an Ironman event in Port Macquarie. 7.30 can confirm the Prime Minister has also claimed entitlements for a number of other sporting events, but he says they won't be paid back because they were community-related. The Labor opposition tried to make political mileage but kicked a massive own goal when one of its chief attack dogs was found to have claimed two nights accommodation in Canberra while he was actually off skiing at Perisher. Here's National Affairs correspondent Heather Hewitt. Tony Abbott is hooked on exercise. It's how he starts his day every day. He loves to compete in sporting events, and now we know he claims travel expenses to do so. Good on you, Tony. Keep it going. Fresh media revelations that the taxpayer was charged $1,300 for him to take part in the annual Ironman competition in Port Macquarie in 2011 sparked this defence at a news conference in Bali today. Look, um, uh, I believe that all of my claims uh, have been within entitlement and uh, let's not forget that uh, Port Macquarie was a marginal seat effectively and I want to assure you that uh, uh, I don't go to marginal seats simply for sporting events, although the sporting event in question was a community event, uh, I think you'll find that there were quite a few other community events involved in those visits. The federal opposition disagrees. In the absence of a better explanation from Mr Abbott, in the absence of other community events being held which he attended in his official capacity, uh, on the face of it it would appear that that would not be a legitimate claim and I would ask Mr Abbott to reflect on his position and to consider repaying the taxpayer allocation for his participation in a private sporting event. Tony Abbott won't be repaying his travel allocation, insisting the Iron Man was about community engagement. The key point here is whether the sporting event was the draw card and his travel plans were built around it. Department of Finance records also reveal that then opposition leader routinely claimed travel allowance and flights for polypedal charity cycling trips through regional Australia. Polypedal is a very intense engagement uh, with the community. I mean, the great thing about polypedal is that it takes me to towns and communities, sometimes hamlets, that very rarely see a politician. I invite every one of you uh, to go back uh, to look at the program uh, for this polypedal, uh, previous polypedals, and ask yourself the question, um, is this a frolic? Uh, or is this a very serious act of community engagement? And, and, I, and, I think, and, I think, and I think you'd have to conclude, if you're fair income, that this is a very serious act of community engagement. It doesn't stop there. While the opposition says raising funds for charity is commendable and it won't pursue the matter, a pattern is emerging of Tony Abbott using his travel entitlements to compete in more than just the odd sporting event. 7.30 can reveal a number of others he's attended and claimed for. In 2012, Tony Abbott went to the famed Lawn Pier to Pub race in Victoria. He claimed $1,095 on flights and $349 for travelling allowance, a total of $1,444. Later that year, in August, Tony Abbott went to Coffs Harbour for its cycle challenge. He claimed $653 on flights and $349 in travel allowance, a total of $1,002. The next month, he went to Wagga for its Lake to Lagoon fun run, claiming $161 to fly there and $354 in travel allowance, a total of $515. A spokesman for the Prime Minister tonight described all of these as community events and said there'd be no repayments. Unlike the approach Tony Abbott took for the weddings of former colleagues Sophie Mirabella and Peter Slipper in 2006. 
he recently repaid expense claims to attend after controversy swirled around some of his front bench team making similar claims for weddings. On another occasion in 2010, Tony Abbott handed back $9,400 paid for travel expenses while promoting his book, Battle Lines. The federal opposition says all of this points to the need for a bipartisan review of the rules. You would like to think it wasn't necessary, uh, but given that we're seeing uh, weddings claimed, Ironman events claimed uh, against the taxpayers' contribution, I think there is a case for examining that. And the government of the day uh, is welcome to put forward a proposal which the opposition will look at in good faith and sympathetically. It doesn't matter what the rules are, there is always going to be an argument at the margins. Uh, the point I make is that people uh, should be careful and cautious uh, when they claim entitlement. Uh, if there is uh, any doubt, uh, they should uh, resolve the doubt in favour of the taxpayer and that's exactly what I've done. The fact is neither side can claim to be clean skins. This afternoon, former Attorney General Mark Dreyfus confirmed he'd have to repay $460 for accommodation at a ski resort when he'd actually claimed for two nights accommodation in Canberra. He called it an administrative error. Not a good look for the man who's loudly attacked the opposition's expense claims. It's a can of worms that reviewers of the system say should be addressed. I favour all travel allowances being ex and expenditure being very public. Anyone can see it's on the members' website, it's on other websites. I believe that would make members of parliament really careful and you wouldn't get abuse or questionable spending to the extent you do now. Alan Fells was part of a government-appointed review two years ago that called for greater transparency and streamlining the system so it doesn't come under three different departments. Can you see that happening? Um, if we keep the pressure on, yes. But, you know, we did a full independent public report and it was not fully adopted. There's just a hesitation by politicians in uh, moving the full distance on this. So public scrutiny remains limited as public outrage intensifies.